Welcome to the Jordan Miller Sports Podcast. It is December 2nd. I am your host, Jordan Miller. We are going to be talking about the big, big games that happened in college football. We're going to be talking about the rankings that have just been updated. We're going to know what bowl games are going on. We're also going to talk about a little bit of some NBA basketball as well. Well, he's got some good games going on. We're going to talk about a lot of different topics. Um, but let's start off with uh, some college football for the year. We had early on um, on Saturday, it was Bama versus Georgia. You did not see that game. It was a crazy game as a fan for everyone if you saw it. Uh, Alabama 35, Georgia 28. Uh, Georgia was holding on for a really good time um, during the, the ball game, and it was surprising to see them kind of uh, drop out. It's kind of what happened last year if you didn't see uh, the college playoff championship game. Georgia would have a really good good lead for the first, first three quarters, and all of a sudden, it just dropped off the, off the earth, where then Bama um, switching QBs for... But in, instead of the championship game where it was forced to go from Jalen Hurts to, to, to Tua, Tua was hurt in this game, and Jalen Hurts came in to step up big time, having two big touchdowns, or had a touchdown, excuse me, a touchdown, big rushing touchdown to get them up towards the game. Bama, I mean, you just, what can you say about them? They're just, they know how to not make mistakes for their team and to be at the right time. Crucial play um, during the Georgia game. Oh, Georgia, uh, the game was tied, and Georgia was at uh, the 48-yard line, and they were going to punt. Um, but instead, they did a fake punt, and it did not work. So then Bama got the ball back, and then eventually it's got the score to 35. So kind of shocking to see uh, Georgia kind of have that fake play. I think maybe the fake play would have been better if it was... Well, if there was a field goal, it would be different. But um, at the 48, you give a really good field position at that point. Um, and if you if you watch the game, um, you could just you could see it. You could feel the how do you say like the momentum swinging to Bama. And if you it's basically it's at that point if in the game it felt like if you screw up this play, this game's over. Like, st- st- straight up. Like, it, there's no way you can come back and say, we can come back and win it. Like, we can come back from with our defense. Like, no. It was like, you could just feel the presence of just Georgia's chance just slipping away. And it was so sad. I was, as someone who, I always try to root for the underdog, usually, if I don't have a fight in it. Um, always the underdog, and Bama always being the Goliath. Um, it was really sad to see. Uh, so Bama is going to be staying number one for sure. Uh, we'll get into the rankings of Georgia later on. Uh, let's talk about another big game. Uh, Texas versus Oklahoma. Oklahoma 39, Texas 27. So Oklahoma with a big win to try to get them into the uh, college playoff rankings. Um, uh, Murray threw for 379 and three touchdowns um, to get, win the Big 12 uh, championship game. Um and they revenged their only loss that they had um, the whole year against Texas. So great way for Oklahoma to come back, especially um, the turnaround uh, now without Baker Mayfield. So Murray definitely a Heisman candidate. Um, to see him, it's great to see it. It was a, it was a decent match, a very good match going back and forth. Um, Oklahoma pulling off the win. Clemson, um, another big college playoff ranking team, uh, number two. Um, dis- Destroys Pittsburgh uh, in the AC- ACC championship game. Um, it's just crazy to see how um, Clemson's just their their run in the AAC ACC championship. Um, it's just nuts to see how they're doing so well. I'm um, kind of like Bama in this case. Um, really, Clemson had you know the big rivals before this, like last year, was you had Louisville. Um, with Lamar Jackson the past couple of years, and you had the Seminoles with Florida State, but really no one Seminoles have been awful um, with that with uh, their head coach now gone, 
and then uh uh just really no one else has like stepped up without and then louisville lamar jackson gone really lamar jackson was the louisville cardinals there's no other way of putting it heisman candidate i mean just breaking numbers is crazy um let's talk about another team um that could that could be making the college playoff rankings ohio state versus northwestern um northwestern uh 24 ohio state 45 so it was actually a pretty good game um first first half if you didn't watch it um it was uh well ohio state was up uh pretty good um against northwestern but then uh, northwestern came back but then uh ohio state said no we're uh we're not gonna let this happen so um but definitely it was an interesting game um once the uh third quarter happened um where they uh, ohio state had to put some pressure on them um the one team we didn't talk about um that's in the play current playoff setting is notre dame which they did not have a championship game um so definitely something to look at um so let's talk about now the college uh uh playoffs so as the current state or the new standings now number one is alabama no surprise clemson number two notre dame number three now the fourth spot is going to oklahoma i feel like that's fair i feel like that's fair um if you look at the losses uh the big for the pretty much the three teams that had the best chance was oklahoma ohio state and georgia if that that felt like the um considerations of who were the best ones and uh, Bama, or no, sorry, not Bama, Oklahoma only having the one loss against a ranked, te ranked team, Texas, and then beating them back. Ohio State losing terribly um, to, it was Purdue, I think it was 31 on the road. I mean, or it, was, it, was, it was like a 30 Whopper game, it was crazy. And then uh, Georgia losing twice to Bama. I mean, you, you have to get one win. You have to at least get one win. And like, because if you can't get that second win, it's like, why should we give you a third chance? So... I think that's fair um so december 29th will be clemson versus notre dame 4 p.m eastern on espn and then uh after that game uh the alabama versus oklahoma games are really good i think i think everyone's gonna be looking at um clemson and notre dame because that one's actually kind of interesting um personally i haven't really paid too much attention to clemson because of the fact that there really hasn't been a challenge for them notre dame has had a couple of games um with Michigan earlier in the season, uh, Oklahoma with Texas. Uh, there's, there's some good games. So Clemson and Notre Dame is going to be really interesting. I think with Bama having both a defense and an offense, and Oklahoma really just only has an offense, almost no defense. So um, it's going to be interesting because Bama with Tua, um, Heisman candidate, and then you have Oklahoma with Murray, who's a Heisman candidate. I think those are two favorites, so it's going to be really fun to see offensive uh, powers. Um... So let's see what else we got here. Uh, some bowl games: North Carolina, AT&T versus Alcorn State. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, this came out. We just, we just have the college playoff uh, playoff rankings. So who? So I think uh, the big question is who's going to come out of this. I think it has to be Bama. I mean, I don't know how any way they can pull off the upset. Um, I just don't think an upset is going to happen with Bama. Um, they just show how dangerous they are. Like, they've always had a defense, but have they ever had an offense? That was always a big question, and I, I think, like, you can't doubt Tua. And then you can't, and then if you have, if you say Tua starts, and if he gets hurt, I think then it gets crazier, because Jalen Hurts, he's not, he's not really a, um, like, in the pocket passer, but he can run. And I think when you, if you develop your strategy, we're going to, we're thinking of Tua as um, a pocket passer. Then you go to Jalen Hurts, who then he goes for running, and then it just throws off your whole scheme schematic. And I think Georgia found that out over the weekend. So that's going to be really interesting to um, watch those games. Um, you just hope somebody steps up. And I think at this point, you just want a good match. Um, I, I just, oh man, the, the days of when it was Bama and Clemson with Deshaun Watson were, were probably my, my favorite highlights to watch besides Ohio State winning it the first time ever, shout out, um, but 
it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Um, I have to keep it, your eyes out for that uh, that big big championship game. Uh, let's talk about some NBA basketball on this Saturday or this just yesterday, this past Saturday. Uh, let's go here. So big game or big upset upset alert wow warriors uh pistons warriors 102 uh pistons 111 um there's some shoving incident going on uh and a, a foul with uh andre drummond and kevin durant um if you didn't see that it was it was a little interesting got a little heated but then they seemed pretty cool about it later on compared to like a regular game uh this was curry's first time coming back uh action uh, with 27 points, so I really expected them to actually win that game because um, with Curry being such a great scorer and then also a leader that and everyone's I believe you know say that engine that helps them that team go. Um, really surprising to see them lose that game because they really do well with Curry. Um, but yes, uh, the the. Uh, Kevin Durant getting 28, Blake Griffin uh, getting 26. So big upset alert right there. Um, Rockets get the wins over the Bulls. No, no surprise there. Ooh, Celtics and Timberwolves. Celtics uh, on the road, 118. Celtics, Timberwolves 109. And Timberwolves have been doing fairly well. I think that's being um, underreported right now in sports media since Jimmy Butler has gotten traded, which is kind of surprising. I've like. It's, it's interesting that the team's doing that well now without Jimmy Butler. Um, I don't know if the team wasn't trying hard enough. Well, maybe they're trying to, like, when Jimmy leaves, we're like, okay, now we're going to try our hardest, which is sad um, because you, sh you think you'd having a great, an all-star player like him um, would help your team to win. You're like, let's now let's turn on the heat. Maybe, maybe I could be wrong. Who knows? I'm not on that team. Um, but Celtics, uh, I think, uh, the big game highlight was, uh, Gordon Hayward. Gordon has been coming off the bench now for a few games now, um, but scoring a season-high 30 points. So, great to see Gordon Hayward, uh, come back after that horrific injury. Um, I think no one wanted to see that, and it's, it's good to see a player who's been injured and then steps up like that, um, for his team. So, that's a... Watch out. I think it's going to be really interesting because of the fact that he did score 30. If he starts averaging 20 or getting close to 20 again, he might be starting um, on the team. Right now, Morris has a spot and Marcus Smart. Um, starting lineup is Kyrie getting 21. So, yeah, no one even close. I'm really disappointed in Jason Tatum right now because, like, I mean, I was on that hype train with him and Donovan Mitchell with... Tatum being like he's going to be Kevin Durant like that dude can score I mean the way my favorite place to watch for is a corner shot then um, fakes it then runs in for the dunk oh those plays are amazing um really disappointed in that um let's talk about Timberwolves uh D Rose getting 26 off the bench D Rose man it's great and speaking of injury players great to see a player come back after horrific injuries gotta give it up give props um towns getting 20 points uh wiggins and covington 17 um just you gotta be happy to see an injured player who did so well and that they get d rose and uh hayward getting big contracts at one point right now d, d rose not on it's just i think it's just minimum wage at this or uh excuse me veterans uh uh wage um but it's just you're glad it's glad I'm glad to see a player finally getting back into their kind of prime format um, to step up for the team. It's a great way uh, to do it. Uh, upset alert. Uh, talk about Pacers and Kings. Pacers, have, they're still doing good, and Kings are still trying to find themselves right now with after being so on the bottom of the food chain for so many years in the West. Uh, Pacers 110 on the road to go to Sacramento and Sacramento getting 111 um crazy uh just, it's really good to see um uh just Sacramento now not being on the bottom of the food chain because they're the running joke of the NBA and one of those questions of should they leave to go to Seattle to give Seattle an NBA team after they left to go to OKC so um 
Just to get, I really like to see Darian Fox step up and maybe not an all-star, but close to that level. Um, kind of like Mike Conley. He's not an all-star because he's in the West, but if he was in the East, he would be an all-star. He'd definitely be an all-star. Um, we're going to wrap it up there. Um, talk about some NBA games. Talk about um, the, the playoffs for college. And then we're also tomorrow, we're going to talk about the final games on the NFL and what will happen there. Any big highlight stuff, Cream Hunt storyline, um, getting more updates or any anything new for the timeline of Cream Hunt. Um, but thank you again for listening to the Jordan Miller Sports Podcast. Please follow us on Twitter, our blog, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you again so much for listening, and you guys have a great rest of your day.